So a couple days ago, Lincoln Riley met with the media out in Los Angeles and had a conversation about defense. I know, it's an oxymoron in itself, because if you know anything about Lincoln Riley, you would know defense and him don't go well together. But there was an emphasis about making sure that this new era of Trojan football would be focused on the defensive side. And it started with the hiring of DeAnton Lynn, and he's doubling down, and he's actually showing adaptability with the hiring of Matt Ens from North Dakota State. Let's go talk about it. If you are new here, welcome on into the channel. My name is Cole Thompson. I'm a radio show host based in Houston, and I talk college football daily. So if this is the type of content you enjoy, plus anything going on with the transfer portal, the national championship, uh, coaching searches, anything with bowl games, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. Leave a comment telling me your thoughts on Matt Entz now being the linebackers coach for the Trojans. Tell your friends, your family, every USC fan, your sisters, your brothers, your mortal enemies, your best of bros, your entire church congregation, and the passed out drunk dude in a Waffle House parking lot about this channel. Give me a follow on social media at Mr. Cole Thompson. That way, we can always talk college football. Matt Entz is a winner. Matt Entz is a damn good coach. And Matt Entz has waited and bided his time for the opportunity to finally get the same type of accolades that the predecessors in Fargo, North Dakota, got before him. Craig Bowl leaves the university, becomes the head coach at Wyoming. Chris Kleiman develops a dynasty at the FCS level, gets the job at Kansas State. And Matt Enns, proven winner. Guy was the defense coordinator for all of those national championships underneath Kleinman. And then he wins two of his own, one in 2019 and the other in 2021. And now he's getting his shot to at least become a position coach. It does feel like it's a slight undermining, but in the big grand scheme of things, it's really not. This is a guy who in a short amount of time, if he can change the persona of the defense in Los Angeles, there's going to be opportunities for him elsewhere. And it may be in the Mountain West, and it may be in the Pac it may be in the now dissolved Pac-12. It may be in the AECC. We don't know where it's going to come. But he will get the opportunity to become a group of five or maybe even a power five head coach with the job he does working alongside DeAnton Lynn. And the big point of emphasis here is that you don't just leave a job in the middle of the night. And he's not leaving just yet. He's going to continue to coach North Dakota State until they are eliminated from the FCS playoffs. But if you leave a job, you usually are leaving because if you realize you've done everything possible and now you have a grander opportunity at hand. Matt Entz did not have to leave to become a position coach at the Power 5 level because if he was done at North Dakota State. The dynasty, in my opinion, still is alive and well. Did you watch the way that they played against South Dakota? If they have that type of performance next week against Montana, they have a shot of winning yet another title before he leaves for Los Angeles. But if you're leaving the job, what you're doing is you're probably getting paid an egregious amount of money. And number two, you probably have some bit of a control. This is going to be a big test for Lincoln Riley, in my opinion, because he is going to have to relinquish any reins, any conversations about defense and just trust the two guys that he hired. And he's going to have to let them work on the transfer portal. He's going to have to let them work on the recruiting trail. They know what it means to develop talent. And more importantly, they understand what physicality is all about. Did you watch UCLA's defense this past year? DeAnton Lynn spent most of his time in the NFL. He knows what it takes to get to that next level. The Bruins were great defensively. I don't know what happened offensively, but still defensively, they were one of the best teams in the Pac-12, if not all of college football. And they have one of the best overall edge rushers in Latu Latu, who's going to go from being a kid who was told never to play football again to probably a top 10 pick in this year's NFL draft. So you have to relinquish everything that you think you know about defense and trust these two guys to lead the charge. And it starts with culture, number one. And then it goes to production, number two. The way that we hear about coaching being done in Los Angeles, especially defensively, where padded practice is second to none, where tackling really isn't a thing, where it's a lot of wrap-ups and they don't really play physical style of football. I'm going to be completely straight with you for a second. Let's keep a buck a buck. Have you watched North Dakota State over the last decade? They are physically enforcing. They would beat up on several, I would say, low-tier group of five schools. They're that good, and they should be able to make the jump to the FBS level at some point. If James Madison can do it, if Delaware can do it, if Sam Houston State can do it, why can't South Dakota State and North Dakota State be a part of the process too? Because they're good enough, and they physically dominate you. And that's the style that you're going to bring to Los Angeles. It is a tremendous hire by Lincoln Riley. And more importantly, it's a humbling fact that this was a move that had to be made. 
I actually give a ton of credit to what Lincoln Riley is doing because Riley doesn't have to make a much needed difference offensively. We know what you have at your disposal and what you can do when you get the right quarterback and a good running back and one or two quality wide receivers and maybe an offensive tackle. We know what you can do. We've seen it up close and personal. It's defensively, you got to make changes. And you're not playing in the Big 12 anymore, buddy. And you're not going and seeing weekend matchups against Stanford and Oregon State and Arizona State. And take no offense to those programs. They are great and they are in the process of being run by the right people. But you're taking on Iowa. You're taking on Ohio State. You're taking on Michigan and Penn State and Michigan State and Nebraska. Teams that know how to build from within, number one. And number two, they have the clear-cut pathway of getting the right players in their system that are physically dominating in the trenches. And you're making changes. And you're adapting. And you're doing what Nick Saban does. And you're doing what Kirby Smart does. And you're doing what every smart coach in college football that still is employed has done over the last few years to keep their status at an all-time high. That is a huge testament. Last season, I'll give you a perfect example. Last season, Eli Drinkowitz realized he had to make a big change when it came to play calling. He needed to leave. He needed to let go of the play calling and give the job to somebody else. So he brings in Kirby Moore, and what happens? Uh, Missouri has one of the best scoring offenses in the country. They finished 10-2 and two on the year. Uh, not only that, they're playing in the Cotton Bowl. He made changes. He adapted. And now he got Coach of the Year because if he deserved it. Now, year before, let's talk about Ryan Day. Ryan Day was all about offense. Go, go, go. Let's go slinging around the yard. Quarterbacks, wide receiver, you, whatever. We're damn awesome at it. But they couldn't stop anybody to save their life, and they could only win one way, outscoring you. And you can't do that in the Big Ten, especially against teams like Michigan and Penn State that have enough talent alongside you. So he hires Jim Knowles, and this year, the backbone of Ohio State, albeit they didn't make it to the college football playoff, was defense. So he adapted which is why I don't understand the conversations that go on with people when they say, oh, Ryan Day is not a good coach. Ryan Day is damn great at his job. And every university that doesn't have a Nick Saban, doesn't have a Brian Kelly, doesn't have a Dabo Sweeney or a Kirby Smart, they would be foaming at the mouth if you have the opportunity. We talk about this in the NFL all the time. Mike Tomlin and John Harbaugh, they get fired by their, by their respective teams. They're hired within an hour at a new place. When Andy Reid was let go by Philadelphia, he didn't have to wait much longer for a phone call to start ringing and him to be named the head coach in Kansas City. When you're a good coach, you have a job. And I can tell you this much, your university would love to have Ryan Day because of his willingness to adapt. And Lincoln Riley is finally doing just that. Matt Entz is a tremendous hire. And I can tell you this much, his teams play physical, they play enforcing, they do not take crap from anybody, and they are more than happy to send your ass packing with an L and your legs crossed with your tail between it. That's the style of defense that you're going to get underneath Matt Entz. And now you added the Ants and Lynn as well as your play caller, you are making the necessary changes. You still got to go out and add in the right players. You still have to get the right names that will fit your team and your persona, but you are doing the best version of what you can to make sure that your team is trending in the right direction. I give it a huge testament to what Lincoln Riley is doing. And maybe, just maybe, this is the shot that's needed for Matt Entz, a coach who's proven that he can win. He's 60 and 10. This is the shot that he gets to where he eventually will join Craig Bowl and Chris Kleinman as the next great names for North Dakota State to lead a program to victory. Thank you so much for watching that video. Don't hit the X button yet. Make sure you hit subscribe to keep up with all of our daily content found on Just Saying It and anything else that we post on this channel. Bye.